Good day, beloved in Christ. Welcome to prayer for Monday, June the 21st, the actual day of the Indig National Indigenous Day of Prayer. Let's take a deep breath as we pray together with our First Nations siblings. The heavens are telling the glory of the Lord, and the firmament proclaims God's handiwork. Lord, open our lips together, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. Together, O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Opening with a prayer from the Kalahari Bushmen. Lord, Lord, you are the creator. You created all things. You are the master of the forest. You are the master of the animals. You are our master, and we your servants. You are the master of life and death. You rule, we obey. The second half of Psalm 89, verses 19 to 52. You spoke once in a vision and said to your faithful people, I have set the crown upon a warrior and have exalted one chosen out of the people. I have found David, my servant, with my holy oil have I anointed him. My hand will hold him fast, and my arm will make him strong. No enemy shall deceive him, nor any wicked man bring him down. I will crush his foes before him and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and love shall be with him, and he shall be victorious through my name. I shall make his dominion extend from the great sea to the river. He will say to me, You are my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. I will make him my firstborn, and higher than the kings of the earth. I will keep my love for him forever, and my covenant will stand firm for him. I will establish his line forever, and his throne as the days of heaven. If his children forsake my law, and do not walk according to my judgments, if they break my statutes, and do not keep my commandments, I will punish their transgressions with a rod, and their iniquities with the lash. But I will not take my love from him, nor let my faithfulness prove false. I will not break my covenant, nor change what has gone out of my lips. Once for all have I sworn by my holiness, I will not lie to David. His line shall endure for ever, and his throne as the sun before me. It shall stand fast for evermore like the moon, the abiding witness in the sky. But you have cast off and rejected your anointed. You have become enraged at him. You have broken your covenant with your servant, defiled his crown, and hurled it to the ground. You have breached all his walls and laid his strongholds in ruins. All who pass by despoil him. He has become the scorn of his neighbors. You have exalted the right hand of his foes and made all his enemies rejoice. You have turned back the edge of his sword and have not sustained him in battle. You have put an end to his splendor and cast his throne to the ground. You have cut short the days of his youth and have covered him with shame. How long will you hide yourself, O Lord? Will you hide yourself forever? How long will your anger burn like fire? Remember, Lord, how short life is, how frail you have made all flesh. Who can live and not see death? Who can save himself from the power of the grave? Where, Lord, are your loving kindnesses of old, which you promised David in your faithfulness? Remember, Lord, how your servant is mocked, how I carry in my bosom the taunts of many peoples, the taunts your enemies have hurled, O Lord, which they hurled at the heels of your anointed. Blessed be the Lord for evermore. Amen. I say, Amen. Let us pray. Remember us, gracious God, when we cannot see your way and purpose and renew in us the joy of your kingdom of light and life. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. This part of Psalm 89 is fascinating in that it begins with the section which reminds the congregation of God's steadfast and faithful love. 
God's anointing of the ruler of Israel, who we see in this psalm as Messiah, but um, of God's steadfast love for the Messiah. And the great promise to King David realized in Jesus Christ is, verse 29, I will establish his line forever and his throne as the days of heaven. So the establishment with King David of an everlasting lineage and covenant made real in Jesus Christ, the everlasting Lord. Moving from the promise of God's foundation is the warning, though, if the people turn, uh, there will be a judgment and punishment. Verses 38 to the end describe the people's experience that God seems to have rejected them. But you have cast off and rejected your anointed. You have become enraged at him. You have broken your covenant with your servant, defiled his crown, and hurled it to the ground. Strong accusations by the community toward God, uh, accusing God of being unfaithful to Messiah. This is quite remarkable as it follows on the heels of the proclamation of faith in God's promises. This encourages us to always tell the truth in our life of prayer. We are praising God for God's faithfulness and sense of closeness with God and God's provision. We praise God wonderful. Yet, if we are despondent, discouraged, it seems circumstances are working against us and we wonder where God is, we tell the truth to God. This is the example of the brave prayer in the Psalms. The psalmist trusts that God can hear the discontent of God's own people. The psalmist questions God, Where, Lord, are your loving kindnesses of old? This is bold prayer that really reveals the strength of the relationship between the prayer and the living God. Even in lament and accusation, the psalmist concludes, Blessed be the Lord forevermore. Amen. I say, Amen. So be it. May we too be bold in prayer and honest, and yet express our heart's experience in the broader context of faith. May the Lord be our helper. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We pick up our reading in First Samuel, beginning at chapter 4, verses 1 to 11. The Lord appeared at Shiloh. The Lord revealed himself to Samuel at Shiloh with the word of the Lord. And Samuel's word went forth to all Israel. Israel marched out to engage the Philistines in battle. They encamped near Eben-Ezer, while the Philistines camped at Aftek. The Philistines arrayed themselves against Israel, and when the battle was fought, Israel was routed by the Philistines, who slew about 4,000 men on the field of battle. When the Israelite troops returned to the camp, the elders of Israel asked, Why did the Lord put us to rout today before the Philistines? Let us fetch the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord from Shiloh. Thus he will be present among us and will deliver us from the hands of our enemies. So the troops sent men to Shiloh. There Eli's two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, were in charge of the Ark of the Covenant of God, and they brought down from there the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of Hosts, enthroned on the cherubim. When the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord entered the camp, all Israel burst into a great shout, so that the earth resounded. The Philistines heard the noise of the shouting, and they wondered, Why is there such a loud shouting in the camp of the Hebrews? And when they learned that the ark of the Lord had come to the camp, the Philistines were frightened, for they said, God has come to the camp. And they cried, Woe to us! Nothing like this has ever happened before. Woe to us! Who will save us from the power of this mighty God? He is the same God who struck the Egyptians with every kind of plague in the wilderness. Brace yourselves and be men, O Philistines, or you will become slaves to the Hebrews as they were slaves to you. Be men and fight. The Philistines fought. Israel was routed, and they all fled to their homes. 
the defeat was very great. Thirty thousand foot soldiers of Israel fell there. The ark of God was captured, and Eli's two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, were slain. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Just a word about the Ark of the Covenant from the Jewish Study Bible. The Ark of the Covenant was a chest containing the tablets of the covenant between the Lord and Israel, found in Deuteronomy 9.11 and 10.5. It was the holiest object in the first temple, but was absent from the second temple. The Ark served as a throne for the Lord of hosts. On its cover were two cherubim, probably creatures with the body of a lion or bull, the head of a human, and the wings of an eagle. In ancient Near Eastern culture, such creatures used to flank royal thrones. So here we have the presence of the Lord in, among the people, and yet they are defeated. A great discouragement and a great disaster for the people of Israel to consider, though God in their midst, they have been routed God is faithful, and God promises to be with us, and yet we are encouraged always to remain in the Lord. Together with me, please. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the peace of the world. The Lord grant that we may live together in justice and faith. Especially this day, we pray for the First Nations communities in Canada and for right relationship between the government of Canada, provincial governments, municipal governments, and the governance of the church with the First Nations peoples. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for this country, especially for Queen Elizabeth, the Governor General, the Prime Minister, and all in authority. The Lord help them to serve this people according to God's holy will. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for children and young people, the Lord guide their growth and development through these difficult pandemic times. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the sick. The Lord deliver them and keep them in his love. We pray for Jamal, for Rose, for Laura, for Brad, for Karen, for Ricardo, Sheila, Andrea, Shirley, for Matt. Lord, Hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who are condemned to exile, prison, harsh treatment, hard labor, or being made refugees. Let us pray for the sake of justice and truth. The Lord support these people and keep them steadfast. Lord, hear our prayer. We remember the prophets, apostles, martyrs, missionaries, all who have borne witness to the gospel. The Lord direct our lives in the same spirit of service and sacrifice. Lord, hear our prayer. Gathering our prayers together, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. And now, my friends, may the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warmly upon your faces and the rains fall gently upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you and all that you love in the hallow of his hand, with the blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed day today.